Domine ad quem ibimus. Lord, to whom shall we go? To whom or to what? That is the question for every baptized person. In today's gospel, we learn that many disciples left the Lord because he said they have no life unless they were to eat his flesh and drink his blood. But with eating and drinking comes a promise. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him on the last day. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Eucharist is to be the source of our unity and our deepest joy, but it has always divided people. As early as the sixth chapter of John, we see that people rejected what Jesus taught about the gift of the Eucharist. Catholicism is a religion that asks its adherents, nay demands of them, that they believe a number of hard to believe things. It tells us we must believe that one God is three persons. It tells us to believe that God has become human. It tells us to believe that a virgin has given birth. That a crucified man has come back from the dead. That Jesus has atoned for our sins. That bread and wine routinely become the body and the blood of Christ. When Jesus laid out this teaching to his disciples, many of them left and no longer accompanied him. Jesus asks his chosen 12, do you also want to leave? He didn't change his teaching to make it more palatable or acceptable. He said, well, let me rephrase that. Well, maybe it's just a symbol. No. He did not water down his teaching. He did not water down the truth. And, of course, we have Peter's response. which leads us to consider that each one of us has to serve somebody or something. How we allocate our time, on what we spend our money, to what we devote our energy, will tell us wherein lies our center of gravity, our main goal. The answer to the question, whom or what do you serve, is found in Peter's declaration, we have come to believe, we are convinced, that you are the Holy One of God. The question is, how does this belief, how does my allegiance to God manifest itself in my life? If we believe and we are loyal, it will show itself. I mean, the person who declares and avows I love to exercise but never exercises, we begin to wonder. Career trajectory, athletics, money, security, control, status, family, 
They all have their place. All things God created are good, and each serves its turn, but in proper order. And all of these things, all of the things we find so delightful and desirable in life are positive realities if they are properly ordered to the God who provides them all. God who shows us that he is totally love wants us to eat and drink him in. Also wants us to be like him. As Jesus is food and drink for the world, so in a way we must be food and drink for the world. The world in which we find ourselves. As Jesus laid down his life in obedience to his Father's will, we must lay down our wills in obedience to God's project for each one of us. That is why we exist. No point in you existing. If God did not will you into existence through love and have a specific project for you in advancing the kingdom, in the hearts of men and women. And as Jesus gave himself away, so we must also be so generous. Jesus comes to us through the flesh and blood of the Eucharist. Every time we come forward to share in the Eucharist implies that we have chosen to serve the Lord that we believe that unless we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we have no life in us. And seven chapters later in the Gospel of John, Jesus says to the disciples, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing of lasting value. Which of Jesus' words are we going to choose to believe and pay attention to? We have the gospel today. And if we believe, that leads us to pursue a Christian vocation. What are the three things that the church is involved in, its three purposes? Well, first is to praise and glorify God. You know, that's our eternal destiny in heaven, to praise and worship and glorify God. That begins here on earth. This is what the church does. And the way that we develop our inner relationship to the God who loves us is through prayer. Lifting our minds and hearts to God on a regular basis. You will find that some of your classmates you will be in touch with for the rest of your lives. You will find that some of your classmates you will never see again or hear from. Now, prayer is like that. The relationship with God is like that. You know, we have to work at it. God loves us first, but we must respond. So praise and worship of God. Secondly, we must proclaim God's love to others. Evangelization. Our goal is to get to heaven. We should never lose sight of that. That's what God wants for each one of us. 1 Timothy chapter 2, God wills that all people be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus died for all. So God wants us to be eternally united with him by eating his flesh and drinking his blood. 
But as Christians, because we are a missionary religion, while we want to go to heaven, we don't want to go alone. We want to invite others. We want to exhort others to come along and see the goodness of the Lord. So that's the second part of our existence. In our own humble way, God will give us certain people who have crossed the paths of our life that we can have a, an influence on. The clearest example is parents. You know, parents, uh, before they go to bed, should be praying that their sons and daughters will go to heaven. You know, not to, their, uh, not to necessarily the next stage in their career, which is important. You know, all things are important and good. The parents should want their sons and daughters to get to heaven because that's what God wants, and that's why God gave them sons and daughters. They are the first and best teachers of their children in the ways of faith. But as Christians, we have a wider view than just our kids. Everybody we meet, we should want to love. I guess it sounds kind of sappy, unless you understand Thomas Aquinas' definition of love. Love is willing and wanting the best for the other. So we can love people we don't even like. This is a definition of love that stands the test of every human relationship. Husband for wife, parents for children, children for parents, siblings for siblings, classmates for classmates, co-workers with co-workers, strangers, neighbors, you name it. We love them if we are on the lookout and prepared to want and pursue what is best for them. And that is being like Christ. And the third thing, of course, the, of course, the church is about is to take notice of and help those who are in need. You know, Pope Francis says we have to go to the peripheries. Who do we find on the peripheries? We find those who are overlooked and neglected. God has a special care for them and he decides to care through you and me. And so this is part of our Christian vocation. We know from the epistles of John that God is love, and we are made in God's image and likeness, and so we have the same vocation. We are to be love. And God has endowed us with intellect and free will to choose. Will we choose to take the Lord's hand and be led by him? Will we choose to eat the bread of life and drink the cup of salvation, which is our food and strength for the journey that enables us to fulfill our Christian vocation. May our choice be strong and confident so that we may make Peter's profession of faith our own. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced you are the Holy One of God.